In this topic, we're going to have a look at genetics, the study of inheritance. So, by the end of this topic, you should know what is a genotype and phenotype, what is a locus, gene, and allele, and what are the meanings of heterozygous, homozygous, dominant recessive, co-dominance, and pure breeding. Now, it was the rediscovery of the work of a scientist monk called Gregor Mendel, which was used to establish the basic laws by which characteristics are inherited. What he did was he did experiments on pea plants to see what traits were inherited in the next generation. We're going to have a look at Mendel's experiments in the next topic. So what's the difference between genotype and phenotype? Your genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism. It describes all the alleles that an organism contains. The phenotype is the observable characteristics of an organism, and it's the result of the interaction between the genotype and the environment, which can modify an organism's appearance. So genotype, genetic makeup, phenotype, observable characteristics. Moving on to chromosome gene, locus, and allele. If you remember, chromosome is a structure made up of DNA and histones, and it's found in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. The gene is a length of DNA that determines a single characteristic of an organism. For example, eye color. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see the gene is a small section of the chromosome. So it's a section of DNA. So just to recap, if you remember, a chromosome gets replicated during interphase so that you've got two sister chromatids that are joined by a centromere. The sister chromatids are identical to one another. So here's a simplified diagram of a chromosome with the two sister chromatids. Now your gene is the length of DNA that determines a single characteristic of an organism. So here you can see it's represented by that little blue line. What it does is it codes for particular polypeptides that are used to make up the enzymes that are needed in the biochemical pathway leading to the characteristic. For example, you have a gene that codes for the brown pigments in the iris of the eye. The locus is the position of the gene on the chromosome. Genes have got specific loci, so the locus is the position of the gene on the chromosome. So let's have a look at the relationship between genes and loci. Each gene occupies a particular locus on a chromosome. An example would be these three genes have got different loci on the chromosome. You can see gene 1 encodes for color, whilst gene 2 and 3 encode for size and leg numbers. Notice how the three genes have got different loci on the chromosome. And then there's something called an allele. And what an allele is, it's a variant of a gene. For example, there's a gene for the color of a seed pod. This gene has got two different forms, which we call alleles. An allele for a green pod and an allele for a yellow pod. Only one allele of a gene can occur at the locus of one chromosome. So what is the link between alleles and phenotype? So you know that an allele is a variant of a gene. For example, an allele for brown hair color. What will the phenotype be? The phenotype will be brown. So the girl will have brown hair. And the phenotype is the observable characteristic of the individual, which is determined by the genotype, for example, the allele for brown hair color, and the environment. So how often she goes in the sun would determine how light her hair color would be. Moving on to heterozygous and homozygous. Now, in sexually reproducing organisms, the chromosomes occur in pairs called homologous chromosomes. There are therefore two loci that can each carry one allele of a gene. For example, here you've got the allele for the pod color. If the allele on each of the chromosomes is the same, then the organism is homozygous for the characteristic. So here you've got the allele for green, 
or allele for pod color, which is green, green. And we write the alleles as either capital letter or small letter. I'll explain that in a moment. Now, if the two alleles are different, for example, an allele for green pod and an allele for a yellow pod, we say that the organism is heterozygous for that characteristic. So the alleles are different. Okay, let's look at dominant and recessive. Now, in most cases, two different alleles are present in the genotype, and only one of them shows itself in the phenotype. Let's have a look at why this happens. So if you've got two alleles, one for green pod and one for yellow pod, the phenotype will always be a green pod. This is because the allele for the green pod is dominant. The allele is not that, that is not expressed is called recessive. And we say that the allele is yellow. The allele for a yellow pod is recessive because it's not expressed when it's um, present with the green allele. Notice how we've written the dominant allele letter as a capital letter and the recessive allele letter as a small letter. So if the two alleles for green pods are present in the genotype, which are both dominant, we say that it is homozygous dominant. So your phenotype will be a green pod. What happens if you've got two recessive alleles? They're both the same. We call that homozygous recessive. So what color will the pod be? It's going to be yellow. So just to recap, an allele is a variant of a gene, and you've got many genes have got multiple alleles. The dominant allele affects the phenotype of a heterozygous organism, the same as it does in a homozygous organism. For example, the allele for a green pod was dominant, so when you had two alleles, green, green, you'd still get a green pod. If you had a green with a yellow, you would still get a green pod. Now, the recessive allele affects the phenotype of the organism only when the dominant allele is absent. What I mean by this, if you have the allele for a yellow pod with the allele for a yellow pod, you'll have the phenotype will be yellow. If you had that allele, the yellow pod allele with the green pod allele, then you wouldn't be able to see that characteristic. The phenotype would be green. Now, what is codominance? When you've got two alleles, which both contribute to the phenotype, this is called codominance. The phenotype will be a blend of both features, or both features are represented. So the alleles that code for the antigens A and B will be codominant and thus both alleles will affect the phenotype. So the resulting blood group will be AB. What are multiple alleles? Sometimes the characteristic of an organism has more than two possible alleles. The organism is said to have multiple alleles for the character. However, there are always only two chromosomes in a homologous pair. This means that only two of the three characteristics can be present in a single organism. What do I mean by this? Well, you've got four blood groups, A, B, A, B, and O, and they're all determined by a single gene. You've got three different alleles of this gene which exist. You've got IA, IB, and IO. A and B are codominant, whilst O is recessive to both B and A. So, as a diploid cell can only carry two alleles, the possible genotypes and phenotypes will be shown below. For example, if you have two A's coming together, the antigens for two A's, the blood group will be A. If you have A and B coming together, remember that A and B are codominant, the blood group will be AB. If you have A and O coming together, your resulting blood group will be A. This is because A is dominant over O. B and B will be blood group B, 
And then because B is dominant over O, you'll have blood group B. And then two O's together, because they're both recessive homozygous, you'll have blood group O. Okay, so the relationship between genes and alleles. You've got gene 1 encoding for color. So you've got a green allele, blue allele. Because they're different, it will be heterozygous. What about here? You've got large allele, small allele. It'll be heterozygous. And then if the alleles are the same, for example, 2 and 2 for the number of legs, we say that it's homozygous. And lastly, what is pure breeding? Pure breeding is when an organism that, when crossed with itself or others like itself, produce offspring organisms with the same phenotype as itself. So it's homozygous for that characteristic. For example, if you cross a homozygous plant with another homozygous plant, the result will be a homozygous plant. So if you cross IA with IA, you get IA. So that's pure breeding. We're going to have a look at test crosses in another topic. So in summary, we've looked at a genotype, which is the genetic composition of an organism. A mutation may be inherited by future generations. And a genotype is made up of many different genes which are portions of DNA. These are made up of different forms called alleles, and they're usually two for each gene. If both alleles contribute to the phenotype, we say that it's codominance. And if you've got more than two alleles for each gene in the gene pool, we say that they are multiple alleles. So what I want you to do is press pause and copy this down. Then you've got a dominant allele which expresses itself when present with the recessive allele of the same gene and a recessive allele which expresses itself only in the presence of another identical allele. The gametes possess only one allele, so random fusion of gametes means that any allele from one parent can combine with any allele from another parent. If you have two dominant alleles, we call that homozygous dominant. If you have two recessive alleles, we call this homozygous recessive. And then if you have a dominant and recessive allele, we call this heterozygous. And that concludes our lesson, the end.